Olá, bom dia, bem-vindo ao nosso canal, a Quinta Ponta Pipa. Hello, good morning and welcome back to our channel, Quinta Ponta Pipa. As you can see here, we have been kindly gifted an e-glide bike, but if you guys follow us on our social medias, the links for those down below, you will have already seen a little sneak peek into this week's video. And we'll show you this a little bit later on. And now I'm off to go and prepare some land to sow some seed for the goats. And I'm off to feed baby goats. This black goat here on the left, that is Bonnie. And the one standing next to Bonnie is actually the little baby goat that spent the night in my bedroom. They're all getting so big, so quickly. As you can see, Muffin has got extremely large in the past few months. And Nancy is still extremely naughty. <laughs> so I am going to let all of the goats out except for these two little babies and their mum because unfortunately their mum has got a blocked milk duct so I'm gonna have to treat her milk duct. So as it is starting to heat up here, it is extremely important that the goats have fresh, clean, cold water all day, every day. We are currently using about 320 litres of water a day, watering the goats and making sure that they're staying hydrated. So it's a bit of, it's a, bit of a hard job cleaning out the buckets every day. And that is a baby jumping at the camera, so I do apologise. And if anyone else is interested in any more goat videos, there will be a link up here. Well, as I think you can see, it looks quite grey. It's been raining most of the night, so the ground's very wet, which is not a bad thing, especially considering the time of year it is, and it's not normal to get this sort of rain. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the trailer off the tractor, and I'm gonna attach my tine plow, and I'm gonna go and prep some land and hopefully get some seed in for the goats.
Right, well, let's go and clean some land. Well, I'm hoping to plough this field today. And there's one above it, and then there's another one behind our large tank, which I've seen, I think you've seen before in our other videos. So I'm hoping this grass is going to be short enough and thin enough, like sparse enough, that I can, I can run my tool through here without clogging my tool up with bunches of the grass, and then you have to dump it, and then you just make an uneven field. So let's see if we, uh, we get on all right. There's some seed loaded in the basket. Let's go and sow these seeds. I've got a mixture here, that's corn, and this is Sudan grass and wheat. Sudan grass is the little black seeds there. It's not fully mixed yet. I'm gonna plant a larger amount of corn and however far this goes in the field, I try and spread it evenly, just so there's some extra growth in the field rather than just corn. So let's go and have a look what I managed to do yesterday. And I've been round the field once more this morning, picking out any large clumps of grass by hand uh, and just making sure that when I go through with the, the tool, it doesn't bring large bunches of, of grass like this up. Because all it'll do if I've already spread the seed, when it hooks grass in there, it'll just drag all the seed to one spot in the line I've just driven over and you'll have a thick growth of stuff there and, and nothing anywhere else. That's if it even germinates correctly. So. Let's go and get on. Right, well the first pass is going to be corn. I don't know if you can hear, but the goats are close by. So I'm expecting some unwanted helpers. And what I'd normally do is I'd do all three fields at once, sowing at once then I'd plough it in. I think I'm going to have to do each one and then plough it. And here they are. There you go. They're going to be a pain. Almost guaranteed. This is one of the fields. I need to fence this side and the side against the road. The side over there against the road. All the way down basically to the, the house because these three fields I can irrigate from the big Lister pump, if you've seen that, uh, which comes out over in this corner here. Uh, and it's sort of like a trial this year. I've not irrigated before with this, uh, with the Lister pump. I've got to make some little metal gates so I can move which way the water comes out of the water channels. And then I've got to see how it's going to actually go across the land. Is it just going to go in one little route or am I going to have to, with the plough, draw a V all the way through the field that I can then take little lines off so it spreads the water evenly across the field. So that's going to be something I'm going to have to find out in the future when I experiment with that. So I'm going to crack on and get this seeding in. Not sure if you guys are actually going to see the corn here. There's 
the corn, there's the black seeds, there's the cereal. And I haven't done that edge of the, the field. And the reason why is you can see bits of grass here. You'll find there's a brown lump of it there. There's a brown lump of it there. There's one further along. And uh, it binds up in the, in the plow on the back of the tractor, the time plow. And this left hand side that I've prepared seems to keep the grass always slightly shorter than this side. And I know that if I plow that up, even though it's that high, it's that short, it will catch in all my tines and I will just make horrible lumps like this in the field as I go along and have to release the plow to drop the grass. It doesn't smooth it out. So I've been around this actual particular field three or four times to get it as clean as this. Time to rake it all in. Thankfully today is a yellow warning for fires and I think that's due to the several days rain we've had and the overcast and the lack of very strong winds so when it's a, a yellow warning day i can use the plow on the back of my tractor but most other days these are banned after 11 a.m in the morning now which is very bizarre and it's the first year they've done this before it was always streamers with metal blades you could carry on using a streamer if it had nylon uh -uh, not this year it's all banned so uh, from 11 o'clock onwards on days above yellow warning so today is yellow so that means i can use this and now we're just going to gently sow this lot in rake it in i'll stick you somewhere so you can see hopefully try you here because this is water outlet that we've shown you before in the other videos that comes from the lister pump so hoping that is going to flood irrigate this field for me but that's for another day. So now we have finished doing our morning chores, it is time to put the Ellie Glide bike together. But I'm going to try and get Molly to put the bike together this morning because I thought it might be good to show that uh, a young lady could put the bike together pretty much unassisted. I'm going to uh, just be on standby for Molly uh, if she needs me or give her a hand getting things out of the box. So let's have a look, see what these guys have sent us. So if anyone is interested in a 50 euro discount, there will be links for that in the description below. Let's get on and... Uh, Try and put this thing together. Okay, I'm definitely going to need help getting it out of the box. Mm -hmm. So it has been extremely well packed, but I'm definitely going to need Dad's help to get this out of the box so I don't damage anything. One box of parts here. And another one. I think one of these is going to be the electric charger. Right, well it's been very well packed like we've already said with cable ties so it's just a pair of cutters. Obviously you don't want to scratch the frame or the paintwork. We'll get back to you in a second when we've unraveled all of this. So we are going to have a look inside of these boxes and see what other parts we have. So I believe this is the charger. We have some pedals, 
what I assume to be throttles. Oh, and it also comes with some tools to put everything together with. Bolts. Reflectors. Not 100% sure what this is yet. That is a gear guard that guides the dra that protects the derailleur on the back. And the reason I know that is I used to be a bike mechanic. How strange is that? I'm sure most of you are wondering. So what have you got there? De decent yes. instructions? This is what I will be needing the most is the instruction manual. Good. Right. OK, well, let's put that to some use then. So it looks like quite a decent little kit, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. As I said, I used to be a bike mechanic for quite a large bike company in the UK for some time. And it's actually very well packaged compared to most bikes. Uh, I think it's quite a decent little bike for the money. With most bikes, the best thing to do is fit the front wheel first because it'll hold the bike up for you. So that's what we're going to do now. There's a tiny little bar in here, which is for to stop the forks being squashed in transit, which looks like actually a lot better than most of the bikes used to come with when I was doing it. It's actually a steel bar, it used to just be a bit of plastic. Right, so one of the spanners in the kit. It's going to undo this bar. There we go, that's that bit out. Let me stand the bike up. So it's got protectors on the end of the bolts, we're going to take those off. And when we get the wheel on, it'll be over to Molly to, to finish the rest. It might pay to have two people do this because it's obviously it's got disc brakes and we need to get that in between the pads which can be a bit awkward on your own. Not the right way? No. Nope. Like that. Like that. There you go. And you should be able to see like most bicycles will have this part. There's a washer here that has a little tab on it and that little tab goes in the little hole there and what that does is that stops your wheel falling out. Should your nuts come a little bit loose, it'll, it's a safety thing to stop your wheel falling off the bicycle which is pretty standard on any bicycle. front wheel nice and tight. Now Molly's going to put the handlebars on. I'll make sure they're central. Is that why there's grooves? Well, there's grooves to help this clamp grip to it, but you also use those as a so there's the same amount coming out either side. Okay. Now to fit the front light because it comes with a light that actually runs off the power pack. A proper quality sort of mountain bike with a an electric motor on it are around six to eight thousand euros now. I mean the sort of bike that I used to ride like a professional mountain bike or a high quality one. I think this for eight hundred and something euros I think is extremely good. Um, can't wait to give it a go actually. Right now we're going to fit the electric throttle which is how you tell the bike to carry on. I don't know why it doesn't come fitted maybe to help protect it again but it seems rather dark but it's actually got a, a bicycle grip on it so we're gonna have to pull this off now how we'd normally take this off in a bike workshop is put an airline under there and blow it and it'll just blow it straight off but like this I'm gonna have to peel it off there we go and it says in the book we should leave 15 millimeters between this and the edge of the brake lever there so I think I'm going to have to move these parts in a little bit or oh no it's hold, it's it's already spaced itself and then we want this cable to go in a decent route I 
think there's going to be about the best option. Basically there's a bung inside there that goes inside the handlebar and when you screw this up it'll swell up and it'll lock it onto the handlebar. There we go, that's gripped on there now. That's it, it's nice and tight and the throttle's easy to access. Now we've got to route this, which I think we're going to undo some of this cable tidy here, which literally just winds around the, the cables. I think I just found the connector inside the frame. So if you can't find it externally, look inside the little hole, which is here, which is where the, the cables go down and they come into the battery. So this is where we're going to have to connect it. There we go. That's the throttle cable nicely run down there. And this part was inside the frame. So what we're going to do is we're going to push that back in the frame. And then we're going to put the rest of this spaghetti on here. And then that should keep everything slightly more waterproof because it'll be inside. Not that it rains a lot in Portugal, but you might be able to see today it's quite a grey day. It's actually not a super hot sunny day, so not a bad day for putting together a, a bicycle. So there we go. That's a bit tidier, isn't it? There's a lot less to lose there now. I think we're pretty much ready to go, Molly, for a test ride. So Dad has just finished safety checking the bike for me. We have given it a quick test drive to make sure everything is safe but I would like to mention the keys for the bicycle. Because my dad is a very intelligent man, he figured this out. I don't know about that. <laughs> so you unlock it, and then the battery comes off, so you can charge the battery in the house without bringing the whole bike in, like I did, because I wasn't aware. So just to let you all know, that the battery is detachable. And it stops people pinching the bike as well, I think, if you're out on the bike and you leave it somewhere a little bit suspect not that there's that many places in portugal like that thankfully but like molly's just said it really does help you to charge the the battery up just by taking it indoors okay, it has to go on slightly lower down don't it lower yeah before it clicks in oh, okay That's it. Oh, okay and then one twist of the key you take the key out and then it doesn't come off again yeah so do you like it, Molly, with the chance, with the times you've been riding it? Absolutely love it. <laughs> it is going to be the best thing for me so that I can go to the village, I can go to the shops and I can have a slight sense of freedom without having to ask my parents to take me everywhere. Um, my mum has also had a go on the bike because some of you are aware my mum has rheumatoid arthritis and she really, really struggles riding a normal bicycle as her knees cramp quite bad and she loves it. So my mum has enjoyed using this bicycle. The only thing that she struggles with is getting on the bicycle because of the main frame. So hopefully Ellie Glide will be sending us a step through bike and how it will be so much easier for her to go on a family bike ride with us. Thank you so much Ellie Glide for sending us this bike. So let's go and give her a test ride. But safety first because I'm clumsy. Yeah, it looks good. And especially with the throttle. Yeah, That's this really is the, cool. <laughs> the throttle. And this here is the speed adjuster. Yeah. So it goes to five assist or one. Aqui, o Felipe diz olá. 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 
So I would like to say a huge thank you to everyone who has watched this week's video. So don't forget to give us a like, subscribe, and we will see you back here next week.